Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Leatherneck Insider. I'm Johnny Jezerowski. And I'm Austin Holznagel. Leatherneck Insider crowned the first Athlete of the Week voted by you, the people. Jack Bell has more with Dylan Sears, your Athlete of the Week. Sears, the first ever Leatherneck Athlete of the Week. Dylan, is there anyone that you want to, you know, thank or put a test to of you winning the award? Uh, you know, I don't, I don't think you, you can go without thanking your teammates. I think... Um, I think they put me in good situations a lot of the time to be successful up there. And, you know, obviously you can't do it without your teammates. So definitely them. And what are you looking forward to going the rest of the way here with the season being about halfway through? Well, hopefully getting some more wins. Uh, we look good on Sunday. Um, you know, if you look at our offense, I think one through nine, we have a lot of guys that can do some pretty unique things and we can put some pressure on, on defenses just based on pretty much just our speed and kind of putting the ball in play. Um, if you look at, I think Mitch won Summit League Athlete of the Week or Player of the Week or something like that this week. So, I mean, he's starting us off, and then you go down to the bottom with Max Slavens on Saturday and Sunday. I think he gave us the lead early in the, the first game and then um, had a big bunt there in the, the Sunday game that kind of helped us secure that win. So I think one through nine, we have a lot of guys that can do some pretty unique things. So hopefully just putting it all together and getting everybody on the same page at once and then hopefully turning things around here. Yep, absolutely. Reporting for Leatherneck Insider, I'm Jack Bell. Thank you, Jack, and congratulations to Dylan Sears on winning the inaugural Leatherneck Insider Athlete of the Week. In WIU men's basketball news, one player was selected to participate in a three-on-three -three national championship tournament. A senior on the WIU men's basketball team was selected to participate in the three-on-three -three national championship tournament held in New Orleans during the Final Four. Carius was chosen as one of the best Division I basketball players who looked to pursue professional basketball opportunities. Carius was on a team made up of players from the Summit League and the Ohio Valley Conference. He discusses what it was like to get the invite. I mean, it was really cool. I was always really, obviously really excited. Um, I only found out maybe three or four days beforehand but um, I didn't entirely know what to expect, but uh, I mean, it ended up being a really cool experience. While the Summit OVC team was unable to make it to the finals, there was still a bunch of excitement throughout the weekend. The entire environment, um, the three on three tournament was really cool, it was really well put on, but then just the city of New Orleans in general over the final four was amazing. I mean, you walk around and you, you don't go two seconds without passing a coach with their polo and their team name on it, or their team logo on the uh, shirt. And, um, and it was just a really cool basketball environment. And then we had some of our coaches down there as well, too. I got to go see and meet up with, and they stopped by a game. So uh, it was just a great, for a basketball lover like myself, it was just, it was, it was great. At the tournament, Curious learned he can score with just about anyone. Curious has his eyes set on playing professional basketball following graduation. Yeah, um, definitely uh, looking at hiring an agent here in the next couple of weeks and going to play professionally as well. I mean, that tournament um, just uh, really got me excited and gave me some confidence going forward um, and getting into that field. Um, having my first real experience at a professional basketball setting. So um, if anything, that just uh, made me uh, all the more confident in myself and um, going forward into that, uh, that realm. We wish Will Carius nothing but the best in his future. Reporting for Leatherneck Insider, I'm Kylie Rogers. Trading the ball for a baton, we head over to track and field where Paulina Westerfeld took first place in the 1500 meter and Akeen Kali took first place in the 800 meter with a time of one minute and 50 seconds. This sets a new record for the Joey Haynes Invitational. The team will take the weekend off before heading to Normal, Illinois for the Redbird Challenge on Friday, April 15th. When we come back, we'll give you a recap on how our baseball and softball teams did over the weekend. Don't go anywhere. Here, I engineer the future. Here, I have countless opportunities. Here, I do research. Right here at Western. Welcome back to Leatherneck Insider. Last weekend, the WIU softball team took on North Dakota and won the series, taking two out of three games, which improved their conference record to three and three. Pitching was a huge help for the Leathernecks as Leatherneck Insider Athlete of the Week nominee Abby Carlin 
through 10 innings, only allowing one run and recording eight strikeouts. A couple of them that throw a little bit harder. Their goal was to be able to throw a lot in the inner half. And I think that they did what they needed to do there. And then Abby Carlin, you know, who has established herself as our ace, she is good to go when she's able to mix speeds like every other pitch. And that's what she was able to do. Besides pitching, the Leathernecks base running was also a key to their success. But I do think that our reads on the bases, like, you know, game one against North Dakota, we won because Amy made a good read and a ground ball. If she didn't make that read, like that game probably goes into extras and who knows what happens. So I, I would say the offense approach that changed was just better mentality on the bases. Looking ahead to this weekend, the Leathernecks have a big matchup against the South Dakota State Jackrabbits. We will um, prep for their pitchers all week. They have a very successful pitching staff. They've got two kids that do completely opposite things, and they're very good at what they do. One's going to be a little bit more higher velocity. The other's going to be a lot of change of speeds. So we're going to structure our practice, our offensive practices around that, the scouting report. So we will be spending the next three days, uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, going through that. For Leatherneck Insider, I'm Johnny Jazarowski. Thank you, Johnny. How did the baseball team do this weekend? Well, the Western Illinois baseball team returned home to Alfred D. Boyer Stadium for the first time this season as they hosted North Dakota State for a three-game series. The Leathernecks went 1-2 and two, but were able to pick up their first Summit League victory. WIU lost games 1-2, and 15-6, and 6-4 in Game 2. Jace Warkentine struck out 10 batters, tying a career high. Western took Game 3 by a score of 6-2 and held the Bison to just three hits. Nick Mitchell went 6-for-15 with four RBIs in the series, earning him Summit League Player of the Week honors. WIU will travel to South Dakota State for a three-game series on April 9th. Traveling to the south side of Macomb, Macomb High baseball team is still searching for their first win of the season, as they suffered their third straight loss last Tuesday against Moline 5-3. The Bombers will look to turn that around as they take on Canton this Friday. The Macomb High softball team is off to a hot start as they extended their winning streak to four games after defeating Pittsfield on Tuesday 12-1. Over the course of the Bombers' first four games, the defense has only allowed one run all season. The Bombers will look to extend their winning streak as they will take on Bushnell Prairie on Monday. Spring is here, but fall is bringing the excitement as Western Illinois released their 2022 football schedule. I'll give you my key players to look out for the upcoming season after the break. Your vision my goal is to work at a top 100 television station as a reporter, anchor, and a producer. Our mission. Thanks to Western, I have a resume that would beat out most students from the top journalism schools in the country. This is Western Illinois University. I am a success story. I am a Leatherneck. We're back with more Leatherneck Insider. Austin, what's going on over at Hanson Field? Well, Johnny, spring practices have begun and Western Illinois has released their schedule for the 2022 football season. Many familiar teams are on this list, including Northern Iowa, Youngstown State, North Dakota State, Indiana State, are all making trips to Hanson Field this year. The Leathernecks also get the chance to travel to Big Ten country to take on Minnesota on their home turf. There are a lot of new and familiar faces to look out for this season. The offense has running back Ludovic Choquette returning along with quarterback Henry Ogala, tight end Jack White, wide receiver Jalen Reed are also looking to make an impact this season. Defensively, linebacker Juan De La Cruz and cornerback J.J. Ross look to lead a defense that has lost a lot of experience. Some other names to keep an eye out for are cornerback Braylon Brooks and defensive lineman Rafael Arubo. Sixth year senior kicker Mason Laramie looks to continue his fantastic career as a Leatherneck. You can see all these new players in action during Western Spring Game on a Friday, April 22nd at 6.30 on Hanson Field. Canadian freshman Paige Grice has had a strong start to her Leatherneck career. Grice currently leads the Leathernecks in wins, sitting with five. The Leatherneck freshman continued her dominance against Quincy as she recorded the match-winning point, helping head coach Sean Hyden pick up his 100th career win. Western will host Oral Roberts in their home finale Saturday at 1 p.m. 
Don't go anywhere, because up next, we're excited to announce a brand new segment we think you'll like. Stick around to find out. Western Illinois University. Our beginnings in 1902 focused on providing affordable teacher education training. We've changed with the times and excelled through the years. Today, Western is positioned for the next 100 years and beyond. Affordability of diverse academic programs, outstanding learning opportunities, and hands-on experiences provide excellent job placement for our graduates. This is Western, forever Western. Welcome back. We now send it over to the best stool boy in the country. We bring you the very first episode of Stool Boy Sports brought to you by Leatherneck Insider's very own Peyton Hutchins. Hello everyone, and welcome to the first ever Stool Boy Sports segment. I am your host, Peyton Stool Boy Hutchins, and today I will be discussing the NBA playoffs, which are set to tip off in a couple weeks. First, I'm gonna start with the Eastern Conference since all 10 teams have already been decided for the playoffs. The non-playing teams are the top six teams, and the most surprising team to me has been the Boston Celtics, who currently sit as a two seed in the East. Since January 29th, the Celtics have a record of 24 and five, and have been one of the hottest teams in the NBA during that stretch. Moving on to the seven through 10 seeds, which will be the teams in the play-in tournament. The seven through eight matchup at the moment is the Cleveland Cavaliers versus the Atlanta Hawks. I think that the Cavaliers will beat the Hawks in this matchup, because the Hawks have struggled all year long, and the Cavaliers have been a pretty good, pretty good season so far with good play from their guards such as Darius Garland and Colin Sexton, who have a combined 37.6 points per game average this year. With that being said, I have the Cavaliers locking up the seventh seed in the East. Moving on to what will be, probably be the matchup to watch for the playing tournament will be the 9-10 matchup of the East. The 9-10 matchup will be the Charlotte Hornets versus the Brooklyn Nets. I see the Nets winning this game because of all the superstars and firepower that the Nets have, and the Hornets will not be able to match the Nets if they have to rely on LaMelo Ball for most of the game. That will bring up the Nets taking on the Hawks for the eighth seed in the East. I have the Brooklyn Nets becoming the eighth seed in the East, making it an interesting first round matchup between the Miami Heat and the Brooklyn Nets. My Eastern Conference final prediction is the Miami Heat versus the Milwaukee Bucks because those two teams have been the most consistent teams in the East all season long. The champs of the East will be the Miami Heat. Moving on to the West, there are only four teams that have shown all year long that they have what it takes to make a deep postseason run. Those four teams are the top four teams of the West, which are the Suns, Grizzlies, Warriors, and Mavericks. The surprise team for me has been the Memphis Grizzlies. I don't think many people expected the Grizzlies to be in the top four of the West, but the production that they have gotten from John Morant has been insane, and the Grizzlies have definitely earned the number two seed in the West. 7-8 matchup out of the West for the playing tournament will be the Minnesota Timberwolves versus the LA Clippers. I see the Timberwolves winning this one because the Clippers have had a down year with injuries and I see the Timberwolves being beaten and injured Clippers team making the Timberwolves the number seven seed in the West. Moving on to the 9-10 matchup which will be between the New Orleans Pelicans and the San Antonio Spurs. I have the Pelicans winning this one just because the Spurs have not shown consistency this year and I think the Pelicans have more talent than the Spurs which will carry them through the first playing tournament game. The Pelicans would then go on to face the Clippers, and I think that the Pelicans will beat the Clippers to lock up the eight seed in the West. My Western Conference final prediction is the Phoenix Suns versus the Golden State Warriors. I think the Warriors will knock off the Grizzlies in the Western Conference semis because the Warriors have Clay Thompson back, and I think that the, the shooting capabilities of the Warriors will ultimately carry them into the Western Conference finals. I have the Suns beating the Warriors in the Western Conference Finals, setting up a matchup between the hottest teams of each conference in the finals, which will be the Suns versus the Heat. I have the Suns as the NBA champs winning in six. Thank you all for watching the first ever Stoolboy Sports segment, and I look forward to seeing you guys next week right here in Leatherneck Insider. I'm Peyton Stoolboy. Can't wait to see what content Peyton brings us next week. With that being said, that's all the time we have today. We'll be back next week with a new episode of Leatherneck Insider. Be sure to give us a follow on Twitter and Instagram at InsiderWIU. And be sure to like us on Facebook. Until next time, I'm Johnny Jazarowski. And I'm Austin Holznagel. Don't forget to keep an eye out for the Leatherneck Insider Athlete of the Week. And be sure to get your vote in to decide who will walk away with this prestigious award. Have a great rest of your week.